Greetings and welcome to Pinball Help. Mike here. Today I'm doing something a little bit different. I am making a video pinball game re review. And this is of the game, the Stern game, The Walking Dead. This is the pro version. And I'm also trying my new camera out here, so you'll bear with me. But hopefully it'll be better quality, just to make sure that uh, we can keep everything in focus. So... What we have here is um, one of the Stern's latest pinball machines. This is the Pro version. I don't know if you're familiar with these things, but Stern now cranks out three versions of every game. They make a Pro, a Premium, and an LE, and sometimes they make multiple LE limited edition models. Now, what is basically the difference between these things? The main difference is uh, how much money they can get out of you. That's basically it. It's all about uh, how much money they can get. And uh, what they do is they sell a scaled down, slightly crippled version of the machine, and they call that the Pro version. And then they sell a premium version, which has got a few more extra bells and whistles, shaker motor, something fancy here and there. And then they make another version that's the limited edition, where they claim to sell a set number of them, add a few more extra dingleberries, charge you a couple grand more. It... I personally find it very frustrating. I wish they would just make one game, but I understand the economics of it. I'm not faulting them for trying to make money. That's what they're. That's what a company does. Uh, but as from from a consumer standpoint, it's annoying when you've got one game and you've got three or four different versions. At least like Gottlieb had the decency to call their games completely different names. You know, a two-player version of a game was a completely diff different name than a four-player version, even though those games were almost exactly the same. In the case of Stern, however, they call the game the same thing and they come out with different versions. What we are looking at here is the pro version, which is the base version. I think now what they're doing is they are they're selling the pro version first, try to get people interested, and then they upsell you know more uh, other people into the higher versions. Again, I am a pinball purist which is what I consider somebody who just enjoys playing the game. I don't care if it has all the extra little attachments. If it doesn't affect gameplay, it doesn't bother me. Now, the difference between the Pro and the Premiums, there are definitely gameplay differences. In this game, um, there's an extra there's a crossbow that's built into the bottom down here that shoots kind of like a cannon in um, uh, Black Rose or something like that, you know, um, or even, uh, you know, like in ACDC. It's a very common kind of feature. So... I'm going to be giving a quick review of AMC's The Walking Dead. Uh, now, this is uh, this is obviously based off of the TV show The Walking Dead, which I'm probably the only person on the planet that has not binge watched the entire series. Zombies, eh, I'm, I'm you know, I uh, not my not my thing. But I know any horror themed uh, pinball machine is always uh, highly sought after. So. That is just kind of the the way it is. Um, I'm not going to comment. If you're into the theme, then this game will be even that much more special to you. If you're not into the theme, then you may appreciate my review, which is going to be really just about the game and its playability. So let's talk about the game and its playability. Let me set the camera up here, dial in a little bit of focus, and talk about the features of this game. And I want to talk about this from a player standpoint. I just want to talk about how much fun it is to play, whether or not you are into the theme or whatever. Um, so, first off, this is not one of the absolute latest Sterns where they've got a lot of color changing LEDs. This game does have LEDs in it, but they are standard colors, whites, yellows, reds. So this game really doesn't fully utilize the available technology to make this thing just really spectacular with colors but it does pop as you can see with the LEDs. Um, the game's got some nice features you can update it with the USB stick which is kind of cool although it does take like you know 30 minutes or longer to update it. It's a pretty long process. Now you will see this particular game is a pro model but my friend who owns it has upgraded it and he's got these neat little graphics around the outer edge and he's actually installed a shaker motor. If you do if you're interested in the premium game, it might not be a bad idea to buy the pro version and then just buy the upgrades yourself and, and kind of add what you want. Again, 
not my thing. Certain enhancements I do think really add more to the game. Like if you see the see this see the art the side art there is pretty darn cool, where you've got you know like a kind of prison guard wall thing around the outer side. That's I mean that's pretty clever and that's a neat add-on that does make the game seem a little bit more cool and uh, I think that's I think that's kind of neat um, I'm gonna basically just be going into the mainly the gameplay but I will point out some of the the primary features on the game so that uh, you can let me get that focus going in okay we dialed in all right so this game is relatively plain there's nothing super special about it um, in terms of the build quality, it has that classic stern money saving kind of mentality where most of the most of the play field is made up of just pr plastic pieces, flat plastic pieces that are bolted on that have some um, artwork uh, you know sc screened on it. So that's pretty pretty standard. Um, this game also has a couple of bash toys. I'm personally not a big huge fan of bash toys. There's this big well walker zombie guy right there and when you hit him he bounces up you've got the prison back here you bang on those doors enough times the doors open a head pops out it's it's not you know it's nothing special um the clear ramps and the the white and the color scheme is pretty neat it's almost kind of monochrome in in its uh aesthetic which is kind of neat so you've got this this grayish white red thing going and it does you know i think the, i think they did pretty well with that i see you're a crossbow man uh-huh yeah yes yeah so you hit the thing you get one of the call outs from the the tv show so let's start a game first and then i'll talk a little bit about about this so here we go looks like we got our work cut out for us now the what's interesting is this has got a rather interesting um skill shot let's look at it if you go up here to the top very up here at the top okay you'll see let me get let me dial in that all right. What you'll see is player one. Yeah, I know it's gonna start bugging me now. Okay. So you got these two lit things up there. You, what you want to do is hit both of them when they're lit, and then hit the thing, and that increases the value of what the skill shot is. So it's like one, two, off. You know. So it's crawling. So if you do the one, oh, I got up there, I missed it. But the skill shot on this game is, is pretty clever. You want to roll over those two rollovers while they're lit and then hit the selected lane. So what that does is it actually increases the value of the skill shot. So you start off with X number of points if you get it, but if you hit the, um, the two rollovers when they're lit, it increases the value. I'm sure that's uh, been done in other games, and I think it's a pretty neat, neat idea. Alright, so, let me, let me bat the ball around a little bit and explain. That right ramp is a very satisfying shot. There's also a left ramp shot right there. Very cool shot. Let's see. I'm going to pull back a little bit on this. Let's, I'm going to let that drain. And let's, uh, let's go back over the whole game. I'm pointing out shots that you can't even see. So let's fix that. Okay. So we've got here a couple of different shots. We have the left ramp, the left ramp and the right ramp, and then we have the left orbit and the right orbit. This right orbit goes through the pop bumpers. It's another one of those kind of really cool intimidating shots. Then you have this far right shot they call Woodbury, which puts you back into the Play shooter line. So those are your main shots. And then the and then you get the prison, you've got the well walker. These are both bash toys. You basically hit them a bunch of times to start modes. And then you've got another little narrow passageway behind the prison. That's kind of equivalent to the shot in Attack from Mars, the lock ball shot. Um, pretty hard shots. Um, I didn't do the skill shot. But let me put a ball in play, bounce it around a little bit. There's the left orbit. There's the right orbit, but it's pretty hard to make that shot all the way up to the top. There's the well walker bash toy. There's the... Uh, that's the riot shot. And the bash toy. And there's the prison shot, and it, it freezes the ball. There's a magnet up there. So now I've started the prison mode. And uh, 
then you got your drop targets over here. Uh, the drop target, which will last for the dam. So once you knock the drop targets down, it, it, it says something called dead features are lit. And once dead features are lit, there's a square box near every one of the major shots. If you shoot that shot, the corresponding dead feature lights up. In a nutshell, basically what it means is you just keep shooting that particular shot over and over in a certain amount of time and you make a lot of points. What's interesting about Player this one. game is that, let me, in fact, I'm going to, I'm going to end, I'm going to, with the ball grade. Right. So I'll play, play out this last one. There was a right orbit right shot, very cool. The riot, the riot shot. Come on, we can pick off these rockets. Another orbit shot. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, it looks like we got us a smart. So the well walker is kind of lit. But a bunch of, I'm going to have to hit him several more times to actually start it. So let me let this end without the noise and then I'll go over a little bit about the, about the game. So, oops, I matched. Play again. All right. So, the layout of this game is relatively straightforward and simple. There are a few interesting things about this game that I really like. And there's a lot of regular kind of standard stuff. So let me go over the basic layout of this game. Obviously, you've got your flippers, and you've got your slingshots, and you've got your outlanes. Um, these outlanes are very dangerous. They're wide open. One of the reasons why they're so problematic is because the, 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 the spacer between the inlane and the outlane does not have a rubber on it. I don't know if this is just poor design, but it makes it so the ball doesn't bounce around in there a whole lot. If it, if it gets close to going to the out, it'll go to the out. It, it's just, these outlanes are just drain monsters. And because there is no rubber there, I'm worried about this plastic lane guide getting smashed and broken. I just don't know why they would have a steel ball banging against that, that piece of plastic. Uh, I'm pretty sure that's probably going to be a problem in the future. Maybe there's supposed to be some kind of piece of rubber there or whatever, but I think it's poor design. Um, then you've got uh, drop targets are just great. It's always nice to see drop targets. Can't complain about those. And then you've got your Woodbury shot, your far right shot. So you get your far right and left shots. Um, these drop targets are dangerous to shoot for because they send the ball laterally. And anytime the ball is going laterally, there's a good chance that these outlanes are going to eat it up. So like a lot of these kinds of stern games, there's very lucrative uh, shots that you can go for that are also have a high risk ratio. Um, and I'll go into the different modes in a minute. But I want to just go to the layout. So then you have your, your two um, orbits, your left orbit and your right orbit. They're relatively narrow, but they are, they are able to be hit, especially the left orbit. Um, this game feels to me a, a bit like X-Men. It seems to have a lot of stuff to shoot at. It's got a big bash toy in the middle, but the lanes are annoying, and they're sometimes hard to hit when you need them. You really have to have relatively precise aim to do well in this game. Um, I like that it's not symmetrical. I kind of, I'm, I'm tired of that kind of standard layout. But at the same time, I also feel these bash toys in the middle of the thing are just kind of monotonous. You know, bang, 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 bang. You hit the well walker a bunch of times, and then you hit him again, and he starts a mode. Same thing with the prison. Bang, 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 hit the prison. So the rule set in this game is relatively simple. You basically shoot your different shots, you know, your different lanes, and uh, then you stack multi-ball with some of these other modes. And some modes stack and some modes don't. Now let's talk about these two ramps. Because to me they're the most interesting, unique feature of this game. You have your left ramp and you have your right ramp. And they are both very steep ramps. They are not easy to hit. They remind me a lot of uh, Bram Stoker's Dracula. Where you've got to hit that ramp really perfectly timed with a reasonable amount of power or that ball is coming back down and, and you're going to eat it. Um, that to me is what makes this game interesting and unique and also incredibly frustrating because 
when you need to hit these ramps and you can't get a good solid hit on it, that ball is coming right back and it's going to be trouble. And it's and this also is one of the reasons why I think this game would worry me as a location game because if the flippers are not super strong, you can't even make those shots. Um, then you have your two bash toys. You have your um, prison and then you have your well walker. Basically you hit them a bunch of times and they start prison multi-ball or well walker multi-ball. Um, in earlier software versions prior to 1.56 you could stack some of the modes with each other. Now you can't. You cannot stack prison and well walker as far as I know. You can stack other modes with these two. So if you start working on either one of these modes um, and once you start it, you can't start the, um, the other one. So the two bash multi-ball modes are basically there. Um, well Walker multi-ball is a two-ball multi-ball. I think prison multi-ball is a four-ball multi-ball or something like that. Um, so you've basically got that. Then you also have a couple of different play field multipliers where if you hit these two stand-up targets on either side of the prison and then you shoot the riot thing it'll it'll increase uh, it'll add a play field multiplier um, there's also um, the bloodbath multi-ball which is a result of hitting dropping these left drop targets three or three times to light bloodbath and then one more time to start it this multi-ball mode it is an add a ball mode where every time you drop the drop targets it'll throw another ball into play it's, it's a key part of a good high-scoring strategy where you want to stack Bloodbath with one of the other multi-ball modes and then you're kind of in business. Um, it's also a great way of um, salvaging your multi-ball. If you've got, if you got prison uh, multi-ball going and you're down to just two balls left and you can end up not starting Bloodbath, it'll put all your balls back into play and kick the ball saver on. So it's pretty cool like that. Um, Let's see, what else to talk about? Um, there's so many basic standard features here. You know, the pop bumpers, you hit them a bunch of times and then it starts increasing the points with the more hits they get. Um, there's, there's modes in here that are like your typical Doe Frenzy mode where all playfield switches are um, a certain uh, thing. Um, one of the neat things about this game is you're, you're killing zombies and you'll see the little white crosshair targets pop up on every major shot. Every time you shoot that when it's lit, you kill a zombie. It keeps track of how many zombies you've killed, and there's a separate high score table for that. Um, it's kind of like Follow the Yellow Brick Road in, in um, Wizard of Oz, where the more kills, there's you know, a certain number of kills will light, light extra ball and do this and give you extra stuff. Um, the downside to this game is you can't do a lot of repetitive sh shots. You can't go orbit, 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 or right ramp, right ramp, right ramp, over and over. One time, if it's lit, it works, but these zombie shots rotate around. So in order to really do well in this game, you have to hit a wide variety of shots. You can't System 11 this, as I like to say. System 11 games are notorious for just being, you know, one-shot wonders. You know, you can just hit the same shot over and over and over again and just rack up tons of points. In this game, as in a lot more modern games now, if, you, if you're good at shooting one particular ramp and it delivers the ball right to the flippers and it's a safe shot, this game is going to stop you from being able to rack up a lot of points after a certain number of tries. It's going to go, hey, you got that down. You're not getting rewarded anymore. This game is especially like that. For that reason... It's a pretty good game, I think, to use in competition because you really do have to play all around the play field. You can't just sit in one particular safe area in order to score a lot of points. Um, the downside to that is you do have to hit all around the play field. Like when you start prison multi-ball, there's a couple of different ways I think you can get it going. One is by bashing the prison a bunch of times, but you also have to shoot these red diamonds and they float around. So you basically have to hit every shot on the table. Um, so this game really does require you to work everything all around the table in order to be able to get most of the high scoring things unlocked. The downside to that is if there is something broken or something not working, like a switch on a ramp or the flippers are a little bit weak, this game is going to be largely unplayable. It's kind of like you know having the upper play field flippers weak on Simpsons Pinball Party. You can't, you can't start a lot of the modes because, uh, you know, you can't make the shot. These two very, very steep ramps um, require a game that's in really, really good condition in order for them to work, and they're critical to the game. So 
this is probably a good game in a home environment or in a competitive environment or in any environment where it's very well maintained. But if you throw this out on location, I'm not sure 